Hello teacher trainees and welcome to another class on curriculum studies. Today we are going to learn about gender issues in education. At the end of this video remember to click on the link in the description which has the revision questions for this topic. We have collected more than 60 application questions which will help you in your revision for the NEC exams. Before we begin, please take a second and click on the subscription button and click on the notification bell so that you can access all our lecture videos and quizzes. Let's begin our lesson. Gender issues in education refer to the ways in which gender identity and societal expectations related to gender impact education systems and the experiences of learners and educators. These issues can manifest in a variety of ways, including disparities in academic performance, access to educational opportunities, and the treatment of individuals based on their gender identity. Historically, education has often reinforced traditional gender roles and stereotypes, with boys and girls being directed towards different subject areas and career paths based on their gender. This has led to significant disparities in academic and career outcomes, with women being underrepresented in fields such as science, technology, engineering, and mathematics, in short STEM. In recent years, there has been increasing awareness of the impact of gender issues in education, and efforts have been made to promote greater gender equity and inclusivity in educational systems. This has involved initiatives such as the promotion of gender-neutral language and curricula, as well as efforts to provide equal educational opportunities to learners of all genders. However, gender issues in education remain a significant challenge in many parts of the world, with many learners and educators continuing to face discrimination and unequal treatment based on their gender identity. Addressing these issues requires ongoing attention and effort, both at the individual and systemic levels. Exploring Society's Ascribed Concept of Gender In many societies, gender is a socially constructed concept that is ascribed to individuals based on their biological sex. Gender refers to the set of societal expectations, norms, and roles associated with being male or female. These expectations can include the way individuals should dress, behave, communicate, and express their emotions. Gender expectations Gender expectations can include the way individuals should dress, behave, communicate, and express their emotions. These expectations are often deeply ingrained in cultural and social norms, and nonconformity to gender norms can lead to discrimination or marginalization. For example, men who express their emotions or pursue traditionally feminine interests may face ridicule or social ostracization. Gender roles In many societies, men are expected to be strong, independent, and assertive, while women are expected to be nurturing, emotional, and submissive. Gender roles can influence various aspects of life, including educational and career choices, social relationships, and personal identity. For example, women may feel pressure to pursue traditionally feminine careers, such as teaching or nursing, while men may feel pressure to pursue traditionally masculine careers, such as engineering or finance. Educational Implications Gender-based discrimination can lead to disparities in academic opportunities and outcomes. Girls and women often face barriers to accessing education or pursuing certain fields of study. For example, girls may be discouraged from pursuing careers in science, technology, engineering, and mathematics, in short STEM, fields due to stereotypes and societal expectations. Gender expectations can also shape the way teachers and peers interact with students, leading to different levels of attention, support, and feedback based on gender. Complex concept Gender is a complex and multifaceted concept. Individuals may experience gender in different ways based on culture, race, sexuality, and disability. Acknowledging and understanding gender ascribed by society can promote inclusivity and equity in education and support the growth of all learners. It is important to recognize that gender is not a binary concept, and individuals may identify as non-binary, genderqueer, or genderfluid. 
In conclusion, gender is a socially constructed concept that can influence various aspects of life, including education. Understanding gender expectations and their implications can promote inclusivity and equity in education. Acknowledging the complexity of gender can help support the growth of all learners and create a more diverse and accepting society. It is important to strive towards creating a world where individuals are not limited by their gender but can pursue their passions and goals without fear of discrimination or prejudice. Let's look at the role of boys and girls in home, classroom, and society. The place of the boy and girl child in the home, classroom, and society is a complex issue that requires appropriate intervention to ensure that both genders are provided with equal opportunities to learn, grow, and develop to their full potential. Below are some points that can help to assess and argue the place of the boy and girl child in these three settings. Home. The home is the primary place where children learn about gender roles, expectations, and stereotypes. In many societies, boys are socialized to be assertive, independent, and strong, while girls are socialized to be nurturing, emotional, and submissive. Such gendered roles can limit children's potential and restrict their access to educational opportunities. Therefore, interventions that promote gender equity, including encouraging parents to provide equal opportunities and expectations for both genders, can help to address these disparities. Classroom. The classroom is a critical space where children learn academic skills and develop social and emotional competencies. However, gender biases and discrimination can influence how children learn and engage in the classroom. For instance, boys are often encouraged to take up science, technology, engineering, and mathematics in short STEM subjects, while girls are directed towards language and humanities. Appropriate interventions that promote gender equality in the classroom include encouraging teachers to adopt gender-neutral teaching practices, providing equal opportunities for boys and girls to participate in extracurricular activities, and incorporating gender-responsive curricula that challenge gender stereotypes and promote positive gender identities. Society Society is a broad and complex system that shapes children's attitudes, values, and beliefs. Gender-based discrimination and violence against children are widespread and can impede their access to educational opportunities, hinder their development, and limit their potential. Appropriate interventions that promote gender equality in society include challenging cultural norms and values that perpetuate gender stereotypes, promoting equal opportunities and access to resources, and providing support to boys and girls who experience gender-based violence or discrimination. In conclusion, appropriate interventions are crucial to promote gender equality and provide equal opportunities for boys and girls in the home, classroom, and society. By challenging gender stereotypes, promoting gender-neutral practices, and providing equal opportunities, children can learn and grow to their full potential, free from gender-based discrimination and violence. Effects of Gender Stereotyping in Education Gender stereotyping in education has significant effects on both boys and girls, as well as educators and the wider society. Below are some of the effects of gender stereotyping in education. Number 1. Limiting educational opportunities. Gender stereotyping in education can limit the educational opportunities of both boys and girls. For example, girls may be steered towards language and social sciences, while boys are encouraged to take up science, technology, engineering, and mathematics in short STEM subjects. This can restrict the career and educational choices of children and perpetuate gender-based inequalities. Number 2. Unequal treatment. Gender stereotyping can lead to unequal treatment of boys and girls in the classroom. For instance, boys may receive more attention, praise, and feedback from teachers, while girls may be overlooked or undervalued. This can lead to disparities in academic performance, with boys and girls receiving different levels of support and opportunities to learn. Number 3. Reinforcing Gender Stereotypes 
Gender stereotyping in education can reinforce harmful gender stereotypes, perpetuating social and cultural norms that limit the potential of individuals. For instance, boys may be encouraged to be aggressive or dominant, while girls are expected to be nurturing and passive. Such stereotypes can limit the personal and social development of children and reinforce gender-based discrimination and violence. Number 4. Hindering academic performance. Gender stereotyping can also negatively impact the academic performance of boys and girls. For example, girls who are discouraged from pursuing STEM subjects may miss out on educational and career opportunities, while boys who are encouraged to be assertive and dominant may struggle to develop social and emotional competencies. In conclusion, gender stereotyping in education can have significant negative effects on the academic and personal development of children, as well as perpetuating harmful gender norms and reinforcing inequalities in society. Addressing these issues requires a range of interventions, including promoting gender-neutral curricula and teaching practices, providing equal opportunities for boys and girls, and challenging harmful gender stereotypes in the classroom and wider society. Next, let's examine gender mainstreaming design for schools and communities. Gender mainstreaming mechanisms are critical to promoting gender equity in education and the wider community. Here are some design strategies for gender mainstreaming mechanisms both at school and in the community. Number 1. Develop gender-responsive curricula. Gender-responsive curricula can promote gender equity in education by addressing issues of gender bias and discrimination. Curricula that challenge gender stereotypes and promote positive gender identities can help to create a more inclusive learning environment for all students. Number 2. Train teachers on gender-sensitive teaching practices. Teachers play a critical role in promoting gender equity in education. Providing teachers with training on gender-sensitive teaching practices can help to ensure that they are equipped to support the academic and personal development of all students, regardless of gender. Number 3. Establish gender-sensitive policies. Gender-sensitive policies can help to ensure that all students have equal access to educational opportunities. Policies that promote gender equity in areas such as admissions, discipline, and extracurricular activities can help to ensure that all students are treated fairly and without bias. Number 4. Encourage gender balance participation in extracurricular activities. Encouraging gender balance participation in extracurricular activities can help to promote gender equity in the wider community. Activities such as sports, arts, and community service should be designed to encourage both boys and girls to participate, providing opportunities for all to develop their skills and talents. Number 5. Promote gender equitable attitudes and behaviors. Promoting gender-equitable attitudes and behaviors can help to create a more inclusive and respectful learning environment for all students. Strategies such as awareness-raising campaigns, workshops, and peer education programs can help to promote positive gender attitudes and reduce gender-based discrimination and violence. Number 6. Provide gender-sensitive support services. Providing gender-sensitive support services, such as counseling and health services, can help to ensure that all students receive the support they need to achieve their full potential. Services should be designed to be accessible and inclusive for all students, regardless of gender. In conclusion, designing gender mainstreaming mechanisms both at school and in the wider community requires a range of interventions including promoting gender-responsive curricula and teaching practices, establishing gender-sensitive policies, encouraging gender-balanced participation in extracurricular activities, promoting gender-equitable attitudes and behaviors, and providing gender-sensitive support services. By implementing these strategies, we can promote gender equity and create a more inclusive and respectful society for all. Effects of sexual and gender-based violence on learners and families. Sexual and gender-based violence, SGBV, has significant and lasting effects on learners and families. Below are some of the effects of SGBV. Number 1. 
Physical and Psychological Harm SGBV can cause physical injuries, including bruises, cuts, broken bones, and internal injuries. It can also cause psychological harm, including anxiety, depression, post-traumatic stress disorder, PTSD, and other mental health conditions. Number 2. Disrupted Education SGBV can disrupt the education of learners by causing them to miss school or drop out altogether. This can impact their academic performance and limit their future opportunities for success. Number 3. Social Isolation and Stigmatization SGBV can lead to social isolation and stigmatization, with learners and their families experiencing shame, embarrassment, and blame from their communities. This can further impact their mental health and well-being. Number 4. Family Breakdown and Conflict SGBV can lead to family breakdown and conflict, with victims often experiencing strained relationships with their families, partners, and other loved ones. This can further impact their social and emotional development and limit their support networks. Number 5. Increased risk of poverty and poor health outcomes. SGBV can increase the risk of poverty and poor health outcomes, with victims experiencing financial hardship, homelessness, and poor health due to injuries and psychological trauma. Number 6. Intergenerational impact. SGBV can have intergenerational impacts, with children who have witnessed or experienced violence being more likely to perpetrate or experience violence themselves as adults. In conclusion, SGBV has significant and lasting effects on learners and families, impacting their physical, mental, social, and economic well-being. Addressing SGBV requires a multi-sectoral approach, including prevention, response, and support services for victims and their families. Schools and communities must work together to create safe and supportive environments for all learners, promoting positive gender attitudes and behaviors, and challenging harmful social and cultural norms that perpetuate SGBV. Effects of Female Genital Mutilation in Society Female genital mutilation, FGM, also known as female circumcision, is a practice that involves the partial or complete removal of the external female genitalia. FGM is a harmful practice with significant and lasting effects on the physical, mental, and social well-being of girls and women. Below are some of the effects of FGM in society. Number 1. Physical Health Consequences FGM can cause a range of physical health consequences, including severe pain, bleeding, infection, difficulty urinating, and infertility. Women who have undergone FGM may also experience complications during childbirth, including prolonged labor, abstracted labor, and the need for caesarean sections. Number 2. Psychological and Emotional Consequences FGM can cause psychological and emotional trauma, including depression, anxiety, post-traumatic stress disorder, PTSD, and other mental health conditions. It can also impact a woman's sense of self-worth, body image, and sexuality. Number 3. Social Consequences FGM can impact a woman's social status and opportunities, with girls and women who have undergone FGM often experiencing discrimination, stigmatization, and isolation. FGM can also limit a woman's education and economic opportunities, reducing her ability to support herself and her family. Number 4. Intergenerational Impact FGM can have intergenerational impacts, with girls who have undergone FGM being more likely to experience physical and psychological health consequences and perpetuate the practice on their own daughters. Number 5. Violation of Human Rights FGM is a violation of the human rights of girls and women, including the rights to health, bodily integrity, and non-discrimination. It is also a violation of the Convention on the Elimination of All Forms of Discrimination Against Women CEDO. In conclusion, FGM is a harmful practice with significant and lasting effects on the physical, mental, and social well-being of girls and women. 
Addressing FGM requires a multi-sectoral approach, including prevention, protection, and support services for girls and women who have undergone FGM. This approach should involve community engagement and education, promoting positive attitudes towards girls and women, and challenging harmful social and cultural norms that perpetuate FGM. Only then can we hope to eliminate FGM and create a world where girls and women can live free from harm and discrimination. The need for interventions to end FGM in society. There are numerous reasons why interventions are necessary to end female genital mutilation, FGM, in society. Below are some of the reasons why interventions are essential. Number 1. FGM is a violation of human rights. FGM is a human rights violation, which violates the rights of girls and women to bodily integrity, health, and non-discrimination. Interventions are necessary to uphold the human rights of girls and women and protect them from harm. Number 2. FGM has severe physical and mental health consequences. FGM can have severe physical and mental health consequences, including pain, infection, bleeding, infertility, and trauma. Interventions are necessary to protect the health and well-being of girls and women and prevent these consequences from occurring. Number 3. FGM perpetuates gender inequality. FGM perpetuates gender inequality, limiting the opportunities and potential of girls and women. Interventions are necessary to challenge harmful gender norms and promote gender equality. Number 4. FGM is a barrier to development. FGM can limit the development of societies, thus girls and women who have undergone FGM are more likely to experience poverty, ill health, and limited educational and economic opportunities. Interventions are necessary to promote social and economic development by empowering girls and women. Number 5. FGM is not supported by any religion. FGM is often erroneously associated with religious practices, but it is not supported by any religion. Interventions are necessary to challenge harmful cultural norms that perpetuate FGM and promote accurate information about the practice. In conclusion, interventions are essential to end FGM in society. FGM is a human rights violation that has severe physical and mental health consequences, perpetuates gender inequality, and is a barrier to development. Interventions are necessary to challenge harmful cultural norms, promote accurate information, and protect the rights and well-being of girls and women. By working together, we can eliminate FGM and create a world where girls and women can live free from harm and discrimination. Benefits of a gender-responsive school environment to learning a gender-responsive school environment is one that recognizes and accommodates the unique needs and experiences of all learners, regardless of their gender. Such an environment can have numerous benefits for learning, including Number 1. Improved academic performance. A gender-responsive school environment can lead to improved academic performance, as it can help to remove barriers to learning and ensure that all students have access to the resources and support they need to succeed. Number 2. Increased engagement and participation. A gender-responsive school environment can increase student engagement and participation, as it can provide opportunities for students to feel valued, respected, and included. Number 3. Enhanced social and emotional development. A gender-responsive school environment can support the social and emotional development of students, as it can help to foster positive relationships, build self-esteem, and promote a sense of belonging. Number 4. Reduced gender-based violence and discrimination. A gender-responsive school environment can reduce gender-based violence and discrimination, as it can promote a culture of respect and equality, and provide students with the knowledge and skills to recognize and challenge harmful attitudes and behaviors. Number 5. 
Improved mental and physical health, a gender-responsive school environment can improve the mental and physical health of students, as it can provide opportunities for students to develop healthy habits, build positive relationships, and access resources and support for their health and well-being. In conclusion, a gender-responsive school environment can have numerous benefits for learning, including improved academic performance, increased engagement and participation, enhanced social and emotional development, reduced gender-based violence and discrimination, and improved mental and physical health. By creating a gender-responsive school environment, we can promote a culture of respect and equality and support the well-being and success of all learners. And that marks the end of our lesson on gender issues in education. Please remember to click on the link in the description which has the revision questions for this topic. Also subscribe to this channel and like the video so that anytime we upload a new video YouTube will always notify you. Thanks and have a good day.